Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new build video with me, Sherman. Today we are taking a look at the werewolf build that I made for this wonderful Friday the 13th. <laughs> I'm, I'm a big fan of Friday the 13th, guys. I, I can't explain why, but I am. Um, but this is my werewolf build. This is the Savage. Um, so this build is made for solo play in Overland if you want. You can also play it in dungeons with people, which is really nice. You could use it in Trials if your Trial group will allow it, but uh, it depends on how you choose to play it and what you tend to do with it. So, let's go ahead and get in, get in and look at it. So here we are. We are a Nord with this. The reason I chose Nord is because of the 6% damage reduction they get. Um, also, the extra health helps when you transform into a werewolf, so it's nice. And then on top of that, we have a max stamina. Uh, that's pretty high because we get the 6% stamina as well with the, with the Nord. Um, most people would say this would be better in PvP, but I think in PvE it's a good combination. So let's go ahead and take a look at the stats. As you can see, 10k Magicka, 18k Health, 35k Stamina, and then over here we have a, th a 3,414 Weapon Damage with a 44% Critical. Now when you use your pots, you're going to be using them off cooldown and you're going to be using them as much as you can. So pretty much non-stop <laughs> whenever they're off cooldown and it, you will be sitting at a 54% crit. I know it doesn't seem like much but you are a Nightblade so you do get the extra crit when you do certain things so kind of nice there. We're also of course Werewolf. We have the Warrior Munda Stone and we are using increased uh, health and stamina food the Brazed Rabbit. <clears throat> Going in and taking a look at the gear like I said the Brazed Rabbit and the uh, spring vegetables is what we're using for our food. As you can see, it gives us a lot of max health, really high max stamina, which is really good. It only lasts an hour. If you don't want to use this, though, you can use Dubious Cameron Throne <coughs> for the extra recovery, because when you're a werewolf, you go through a lot of stamina. So getting that extra recovery can really help, especially in dungeons. So carry both, I would say. Um, I am using a dual stat or uh, not a dual set, but uh, the Warrior Elixir Potions on the PTS. On live, you're going to want to use the Stamina po Pots that do the same thing. <clears throat> they give you Stamina Recovery, they give you Major Brutality, Major Savagery when you drink them. Alright, on to the gear. Now, we are using the new some of the new gear sets for uh, Wolf Hunter for this because they work out really good with the Werewolf. Starting with the Monster set, uh, Bo Ball... Balrogs the Siege. Uh, really good monster set for a werewolf because whenever you transform into the werewolf, you get equal weapon damage to what you spent to turn into a werewolf. So you get that extra weapon damage bonus when you transform, and it helps for 10 seconds to have that extra oomph to shred your enemies with. So it's really nice. So we're using a heavy helm and a light here, both divines. Onto the main uh, armor set, we are using the Blood Moon set. Blood Moon is... Eh, it's a little unique. It has an 18 second cooldown, which kind of sucks. But once you stack five stacks of the Blood Scent on the enemy with the five piece, you do get that extra frenzy, which increases your light attacks by 50%. Um, and their light attack damage. So you get a really big boost in damage. So it makes you really fast with your attacks, especially in werewolf form. Moving on, we are using also Salvation Set. Um, I tried to, I wanted to use the Savage Werewolf Set, but unfortunately it's not in PTS right now, so I went with uh, Salvation, and the reason I went with Salvation is, as you can see, the 2 and 4 piece give you max stamina, the 3 piece gives you extra recovery, which is nice. And the five piece reduces the cost of your werewolf transformation abilities by 33%. While in werewolf form, your weapon damage is increased by another 100 in, or yeah, 150 weapon damage. So it just gives you that extra oomph. On the jewelry, we are using two infused and one robust. Uh, all the, the gear here is divines, by the way, and all stamina enchants. The reason I went with two infused and one robust was because if I were to go with a third robust, I would actually drop my stamina um, to 34,000. I didn't want that. I wanted to keep it above that. So I figured 35,000 was a good place, so I left the necklace robust. But I still went all weapon damage on all the jewelry. 
Moving on to the weapons, we are using Salvation Weapons. And a little different setup, but that's because I'm on PTS and I wanted to get the most damage output I could on parsing. So I went with a Salvation One-Handed Axe. I don't have the, the, the enchants in here. Let me do that real quick. Sorry. Um... You, you kind of forget things when you're when you're going through and doing stuff so so on the main one here you're gonna want to have crushing if you want the to, to make sure that you're putting that crushing is getting applied to everything in your dungeon group having it on a DPS is going to be a lot better than having it on a tank because a tank is not going to be applying it to everything so how do I know I play a tank so therefore I know that you can't apply crushing to everything. With a with a DPS they can keep it applied all the time to everything they hit. So that's why I use an infused main weapon uh, with the crusher enchant and offhand I'm using Nernhone with a poison damage enchant and on the bow we're using an infused weapon damage. Um, this will give us an extra weapon damage when we're fighting our enemies boosting that extra weapon damage. Mainly on the back bar, because when we swap weapons, you'll see that our weapon damage on the back bar is only 100 less. Because we have a skill on our back bar that boosts our weapon damage, so. Alright, so now that we've done the gear, let's go ahead and take a look at the skills. Make sure that when you do your skills, you get all your class passes. Um, you never know, you might use some, you might not, you don't, you're not, you know, it's never for certain. And there is a reason why I am not using the, um, this ability here, Surprise Attack, and that's because Werewolf also gets Major Fracture. So I, I didn't see a point in having it on both areas. Now if you want to put it on here, you can. My suggestion would be actually to drop Rending Slashes. The reason I say Rending Slashes over this is because this, when you're in a dungeon or something and you need a block, you can block and you'll get a, a 5k damage shield. Which is really good for you because it saves you some, gives you a little bit more survivability. But I like this setup here because I don't get an extra, you know, 5% health when I'm only on this bar. So, don't need it. I'm an ord. So, yeah, it's a good ability though if you want to use it. So make sure you get all your class passives, your weapon passives, your dual wield and bow. Onto your armor. Light armor, make sure you get the three light armor passives, all the medium armor passives, and on heavy armor, get the top three. Moving on to world skills, I did not do this, but I always do this uh, out of habit because soul summons is really nice. It allows you to revive without a soul gem every hour, and then soul, uh, soul lock allows you to get fill empty soul gems. You do always end up with a lot of empty soul gems in the game because of uh, enemies dropping them, bosses dropping them. This way you can just fill them and they're not empty anymore. So moving on to the werewolf skills, make sure you get all the passives. You're gonna fill in all the skills. We'll go over the skills here in a second. On to the fighter's guild, make sure you get all the passives. Mage's guild, you only need persuasive will and that's just for questing. Sigic order, get all the passives. Undaunted, get the two undaunted passives. And then on to the racials, make sure you get all your racial passives. The reason I did choose Nord though is again, 6% stamina, um, the 9% health, and then of course the 6% damage reduction. When you're in werewolf form, having a lot of health, good resistances, but having a lot of damage reduction really helps and really plays off the build really well. Moving on to this alchemical or alchemy, get medicinal use, and then in uh, provisioning, you're going to want gourmet and connoisseur, especially if you're only using a one hour of food, getting that extra 20 minutes can really help you out. So now that we've done that, let's go over the skills that we have on our bar. We are going to go over here real quick, and I'm going to open up the werewolf line because we're going to start there. So you are going to go with pack leader as the ultimate. This way, you, when you transform, you get um, your light attacks apply a blade for 13,000 damage over 8 seconds, and your heavy attacks deal 50% splash damage and a max stamina increase by 30%. So this is going to just boost you up a lot. It also increases your stamina recovery by 15%. That's why I said Dubious Camera Throne might be better for this because it's gonna give you that little bit of extra um, stamina recovery. So it's gonna give you almost like a 17, 1800 stamina recovery. It's pretty crazy when you're in werewolf form. Onto the skills for the werewolf. Make sure you're using Feral Pounce. This does a lot of damage. Um, 
And also, when it, uh, when you pounce from 10 meters away, it adds four seconds to the duration of your werewolf transformation, so you're gonna be using that quite a bit. Here's Scene's Rage, Inv invoke the Huntsman's Blessing, healing you for 45% of your max health and granting major brutality, increasing your weapon damage by 20% for 20 seconds. I know, why do I need this in PvE? And, uh, yeah. Because not always are you remembering your pots, so this way you can boost your weapon damage and keep it up all the time. Defending Roar, uh, Roar with Bloodlust to terrify up to six nearby enemies, fearing them for 3.3 seconds. It also applies Major Fracture to them, reducing their physical resistance by X amount. And then, of course, Howl of Agony. This does a lot of damage um, and deals 30% more damage to enemies that are feared. So whenever you use your your uh, Deafening Roar, use Howling Howl of Agony. This way you get a big blast of damage on your enemies. Next, Claws of Life. This does damage, but it also heals you. I mean, well, it's, it says it does, but, you know. Uh, it heals you for 50% of the disease damage done. So the damage that's being done over time, it's tick heals you. So it's kind of a nice trade-off. Again, you want to make sure you fill out all the passives. You're going to need them. Devour is really cool now because it's every time you deal damage, um, it gives you increased duration. And it also restores some health, so. <clears throat> Alright, so going over our, our other skills, starting with the main bar, we have Crushing Weapon, like I said. This does a lot of damage. Um, I know it doesn't look like much, but it does, and it also heals you for 25% of the damage done. So when you're in, in melee form, or in human form, or your, your non-bestial form, you have that to heal you. Next, we have Rending Slashes. This does a lot of damage o over time, so it's a great dot. On top of that, we have Deadly Cloak. Make sure you have this up before you transform into the werewolf. That way it, it tries to make it last through werewolf form, so you get that extra tick of damage. And it also reduces incoming damage from area effect. Next up, we have Killer's Blade. This does your execute really just a powerful hit. Now, one of the things you can do is you can put the um, shadow ability here. Surprise attack where Shrouded Daggers is. The only reason why I have Shrouded Daggers here is because it bounces between enemies and deals a lot of damage. And it also gives you Major Brutality. But it's not like you need it when you have Power Pots. Alright, moving on. Last but not least, Pack Leader, your transformation. You're going to want this here um, for your to transform into Werewolf. Remember, whenever you use this, you get 401 weapon damage for 10 seconds. Moving on to the back bar, <clears throat> we have Rearming Trap. This does damage over time. It also uh, gives you major for or minor force, increasing your critical damage by 10% for the duration. Now, the duration is 60 seconds, but it doesn't last that long. It only lasts for the duration of the trap itself. So it's 12 seconds of minor force. Next up, we have Poison Injection. This does damage over time. Um, really good ability and it does more damage the lower the health the, the lower the health the enemy has next up we have endless hail damage over time and then razor caltrops another damage over time it also reduces movement speed but it only lasts three seconds so not very good and then of course relentless focus this is a major damage ability um whenever you deal five light attacks you can fire this off this is for when you're doing a rotation when you're in werewolf form you're not gonna have, you're not gonna be using this so it also grants you Minor Berserk, increasing your uh, damage by 8%, and it gives you Stamina Recovery by 10% when it's active. So try to keep this up, that up, and this up when you uh, when you go into Werewolf form. Try to make sure you have those two up. And then last but not least, we have Flawless Dawnbreaker here. The reason we have Flawless Dawnbreaker here and not in cap, or as a lot of people call it, Incapacitating Strikes, is incapacitating strikes is a cheap ultimate and you can fire it off a lot but it's just it doesn't have the damage that this does this does more damage up front and damage over time this does do a lot of damage don't don't get me wrong and it does increase your damage for uh six seconds by 20 percent but at the this the same point it just doesn't work as well as flawless stonebreaker does because this also increases your weapon damage when you're on the back bar using that bow so, all right, so that's the skills and everything. Let's go ahead and check out the champion points. Starting with the red tree, 
66 and ironclad this reduces the incoming damage by 22 percent i did have three points left over so i put two into medium armor focus and one into spell shield as you can see it does give us a decent resistance value 20 uh, 12k spell and 11k physical this pretty much gives you about a nine percent ten percent damage reduction or damage mitigation and then when you add in all the damage reduction you're going to get for being a nord and all that stuff you'll see why it adds up so moving on to the middle tree we have 56 in the hardy 56 in the elemental defender this reduces basically all damage by 12 percent on both of these so that's why we have 56 in them both we have 56 in the thick skin reducing damage taken from damage over time effects by 20 percent you're not a tank so you don't really need um need to worry about it this just gives you more so like get, having something else this just gives you more we also have 23 in a quick recovery, giving us a 6% healing received. This helps us when we're in werewolf form to get those heals better for so that we can keep our health sustained. Moving on, we have 56 in the Warlord, reducing our break free costs. We have 21 in the Sprinter, reducing our sprint costs. And then over here, we have 43 in the Mooncalf. This increases our stam recovery by 10%. I didn't want to go 76 points into here because I didn't really need it. Because being a, a being a werewolf for one, being a night blade, being you know in medium armor, all that, I get a lot of recovery. So I didn't need extra recovery. I wanted more back from when I did heavy attacks and and stuff. So when I'm in werewolf form, I can get resources back doing heavy attacks. But I'm going to be doing a lot of light attacks because of that. Uh, my main gear set, my five piece gear set, the blood uh, blood wolf set, whatever blood moon set. So, I'm going to be doing a lot of light attacks. This just helps me keep my resources up uh, with 14%. Moving on over here, we have 23 in the Shadow Ward, reducing our block cost by 10%. We do block even as light armor, medium armor wearers. So, having a reduced cost saves us some resources. 40 in the Tumbling, reducing our dodge roll by 16%. Um, we also have reduced dodge rolling and medium armor. So, don't eat as much. So, this helps. And then 1 in the Befoul, because I had an extra point left over. Moving on to the blue tree, starting with here, physical weapon expert, we have 35 points in here. There's a good reason for this. I wanted to get as much out of it as possible uh, with my light attacks, so I wanted this there. So I put 35 points in here, increasing my light attack damage by 20%. Being in werewolf form, getting as much damage out of my light attacks is really important, so I went 35 points in here. I did 40 in the Master at Arms. This increases our damage done with uh, direct damage attacks by 16%. I also unlocked the Butcher, which increases damage done with light attacks and heavy attacks by 5% when the enemy is below 25% uh, health. And this does stack with the uh, dual wield, or helps with dual wield, because when you get the enemy below 20% health, your dual wield does, or 25% health, your dual wield abilities do 20% more damage. So your light attacks are getting 5% more, and then your dual wield is getting this. So it's kind of a nice trade-off. <sighs> Excuse me. Moving on, moving on over here, we have 43 in the Mighty, increasing physical poison disease damage by 10%. 66 in the Thaumaturge, increasing your damage done with damage over time abilities by 22%. 66 in the Precise Strikes, increasing critical damage and critical healing by 22%. And then on top of that, we have 10 into piercing, increasing physical penetration by 1,000. With this crushing, you have a 3,000 penetration value. And then when you add on the major fracture from when werewolf form, you actually have like a 8,000, almost 9,000 penetration value. So it's, it's really nice. And that is our CP. So... Now that you guys have seen that, I just want to show you what this thing looks like when you transform into werewolf. So I do have a target skeleton over here. Um, I did do some poking around on it, as you can see. That was all light attacks, by the way. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just transform into the werewolf. Oops. Transform into werewolf. And as you guys can see, like, I'm getting my, I got my my blood moon up, uh, had it there for a second, my light attacks are just shredding this thing. There's my, my heavy attacks.
And I can stay in werewolf form forever because of the new uh, changes to the... And here we are, just, this is just doing light attacks and stuff, not even really trying to get a rotation off, guys. And it's not too bad. I mean, 20k DPS is pretty good for uh, dungeons and, and things like that. And I'm not even, like I said, I'm not even getting the full amount of my DPS there. So, but let's go ahead and take a look. Oops, gotta, I gotta, I gotta set someone up here. Hold on, because <laughs> I, I keep forgetting that I had to reset my uh, comment metrics and all that stuff. So. <clears throat> But as you can see, we're here we are in Lycan 3 with Blood Scent, 45% uptime, and Frenzied, 16%. I know it's not a lot, but look at my light attacks here are doing 15k on on max, average of 9k. My Werewolf Bleed was doing 4,000 something, and it was next, then my Lunge, and of course all of this other stuff. Uh, poison wasn't going off that much, Shrouded Dagger only, of course, the one time, but... It's not too bad. And then if you look here, we can see that I was at sitting at weapon damage of 4,798. Almost 5k weapon damage with a 44% crit. And that's without using a pot. 72% critical damage. And then uh, my physical penetration was sitting at about 3,211 uh, most of the time. Because I wasn't using the one ability to play, apply Major Fracture a lot. So... So it's it's a it's a nice setup, and then if you look at the debuffs, like we had this, we had taunt from something I don't know, like how we were taunting, but apparently we taunted six times. We also had crusher, life cl uh, claws of life, and then poison, and then our uh, stamina regeneration was basically uh, higher than our heavy attacks return. Um, but the the thing you have to understand about this is like if you look at the base regeneration of 502 versus like the ability output. There is, there is no way I would run out of resources in Marvel form. So, really, really nice uh, setup here. 21,360 DPS, like I said. I'm not I'm not a DPS player, guys. I don't do rotations um, very well. So, I, I don't know how to do a werewolf rotation. But I thought that that was pretty good for being in werewolf form. But I'll let you guys decide. This build is for you. Um, this is something that I normally wouldn't play, but I do like the idea, especially with the new gear sets coming in Wolf Hunter. So, as I said, this is for Friday the 13th build. Just for fun, really. I just wanted to release it for Friday the 13th. It's something that would be cool, entertaining for you guys. Uh, the gear sets, though, are really good. I do like these two gear sets, especially with werewolves. The uh, Balrogs of Siege is really good. Um, because it's whenever you activate an ultimate, you get 10 seconds of this extra weapon damage, which is kind of nice. And then on top of that, this set is really, really good. Uh, because you're, whenever you deal critical damage with a melee light attack, you gain a stack of blood scent for 8 seconds. And like I said, I wasn't even using it, and I was getting it, like, left and right. Because even at a 44%, you get, <coughs> you can build up ultimate really fast, so... And let's just do this real quick. I'm going to do a, a real quick thing. I'm going to get my ultimate back real quick, if I can. I'm just doing abilities just to get ultimate back, guys. Just so I can do the werewolf transformation with a pot this time. <clears throat> I do like the new transformation stuff though. Like how whenever it is, whenever you deal damage, you get that bonus thing.
Alright, so we got werewolf form. We're gonna let the timer run off on this. The combat with that. <coughs> I'm gonna make sure I have my food going for another so many seconds. And parsing on a skeleton really doesn't matter anyways because it doesn't prove anything. Alright, so we're gonna transform. We're gonna pot, jump. Here we got Blood Moon. Go to town. Rawr. Right here we go. We got Blood. We, we're gonna get our Blood Moon again. There we go, Blood Moon. <sighs> I love the Blood Moon thing, that's so, so cool. <clears throat> there we go. 24,000 DPS this time. Not not quite as good as what I, I, I think I could have done. I probably could do better, but still, 24K isn't bad um, for, for DPS and everything. So let's go ahead and let this wear out. Go in here, now we can see I was actually pulling 5,728 weapon damage with 47% weapon critical, 72% crit to total. Um, physical penetration was 3,211. Again, I wasn't getting the um, major fracture applied for some reason, it might be bugged. But let's go ahead and look up here. <coughs> Werewolf was up 100% of the time, which is good. These were up 86, not as quite as, punch, as much as I'd like, but if you look down here at this now, the the Frenzied was up, went up three times, 16%. Down here, 13, uh, the Light Attacks, of course, most damage, 9,000 was our average, max was 15. The Bleed average, 6,000, or 4,000 at max of 6,000. And then our Howl of Agony, wow, that just thing was just dealing some deathly damage. But all, all together, I mean, not bad for the damage. And then if you look at this, the normal damage that we were dealt was 38% normal and then 62% critical damage the rest of the time. That's how we were getting that 24,840 um, DPS was because we had higher, we had more crit and more damage, so. And then of course, if you look at our stamina, uh, uh, 1,034 stamina use or regen for two seconds versus 1,337 every second. So this is what we used every second. This is what we were getting back, uh, or what we were getting back every second. This is what we were getting drained every second. So not too bad, like I said. I think it turned out pretty well. <clears throat> but like I said, it's up to you guys. So if there's anything about this build you don't like gear sets, uh, skill setup, anything, like that, you can change it. It's up to you. I can't control what you do with the build once you get it in your hands you can change gear sets like i said skills traits mundus stones whatever but if you guys do like this build which i hope you do you can hit that like button if you guys want to see more builds by me you can hit that subscribe button but other than that i want to thank you all for watching until next time have a wonderful day and this guy might see you in game bye